You're listening to More Than a Song, episode 12. Hello, and welcome to this episode of More Than a Song. My name is Michelle Nizat, and this is the podcast dedicated to helping you discover the truth of Scripture hidden in today's popular Christian music. My goal is to teach you to connect portions of God's Word with the songs you're singing along with on the radio to help you meditate on truths that will transform your way of thinking and ultimately your life. This week's song, Shake by Mercy Me, is a short, fun song. But more importantly, I can't wait to share with you where it will lead us in Scripture this week. You gotta shake, shake, shake. I have to admit to you that I am a crazy kitchen dancer. I sing on stage at my church and I dance around up there, but it's really not for show because when I'm not on stage and I'm in the audience looking, I'm still crazy dancer. And when nobody's looking, except maybe my fish and my rabbit and probably my two girls, I am a crazy kitchen dancer. When I feel joy, I just feel like I have to jump around, and why not? It's a lot of fun. And my girls and I, sometimes when we're in the car, we'll open up the sunroof and blast the music and raise our hands and jump around in our seats and sing at the top of our lungs and clap our hands. And so I'm really hoping that you are not offended by this song and that you're you're not offended that it implies that what God has done for us deserves a good old-fashioned happy dance. I hope you're not offended primarily because I'm pretty sure that God is not. In the Old Testament, David, King David, danced around in celebration before God. And it was noted in 2 Samuel 6.14 that he danced with all his might. And David is known as a man after God's own heart. So why shouldn't we shake a little bit? Why shouldn't we do a little happy dance? In Psalm 149.3, It actually says that God's children should praise his name with dancing. So I really dig this song and it's a lot of fun. My husband actually said, "Um, okay, but is it scriptural? Does it refer to scripture? And it absolutely does, um, even beyond just the idea that we can do a little happy dance because we're so excited about what God has done for us. And so if you have accepted Christ as your Savior, he has promised to come and change you. And that deserves a happy dance um, with all your might. And so I don't care if it just happened or if you are just continuing to celebrate the salvation of the Lord. I think we should all shake like we've been changed. But to bring this back around to where you can spend some time in scripture this week, however, I do want to hone in on the line that says, brand new looks so good on you. This line makes me think of a new wardrobe. And when I think of a new wardrobe, I can't help but think of Colossians. Now, our memory verse is actually part of two verses. It's the second part of verse 9 in chapter 3 and the first part of verse 10 in chapter 3. And it says, You have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self. Now, I am not trying to take scripture out of context. And those of you who have been listening to me for any period of time know that I believe in context. And so I'm not just taking a portion of verses um, to try to take it out of context. I'm really trying to take those to that, that line or that portion of scripture because it's very applicable of what we're going to be learning about this week but also to keep it nice and short so it's easier for you to remember and really hide this part in your, in your um, heart. But I do want you to explore the context, of course. And so um, I just want you to remember, I want you to study these verses in its entirety, in all of its context. But as a memory verse, I've taken out the part that says, you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self. Now, there is kind of a sister verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 that I think says it just as well or even better because it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
The new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. And you might be wondering why I didn't use that verse as our memory verse. And mostly it's because I really want you to sit and soak in Colossians this week. And so I figured I would take that section out of Colossians that says, you've taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self. And just like Mercy Me, brand new sure does look good on you. So this week, I would like you to read from the message version. And that might mean that if you don't have a copy of the message Bible in your, um, a physical copy, you may have to go to an online version or to a smartphone app version of um, the Bible this week to get to that translation. It's very easy. There's lots of translations online. You can go to BibleGateway.com. That's one of the resources that I use in my show notes each week or BibleHub.com and all of the translations are available for you there. Or I use the YouVersion app on my phone and on my tablet so I can um, look up that message version on that. Now the message version is a paraphrase. In fact, I probably shouldn't call it a version at all. I should call it the message paraphrase. It should be used sort of like a commentary. So you really shouldn't study the message, um, but it is quite useful in bringing a new perspective to scripture. It is not a translation from the original language, and so therefore it should never really be studied as such. But for our purposes today, I just love how it highlights our new wardrobe in Christ. And so I think it'll give us an interesting perspective this week. So let's read it. I'm going to read it to you. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. So, chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you, and regardless of whatever else you put on, wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing, and cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense and sing, sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the master, Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. What a beautiful conversation that we just had by by reading this portion of scripture out of the message. And how nice would we look if we were clothed in this wardrobe? So let's kind of pick it apart a little bit and look at some of the elements that are the pieces in our new wardrobe. Um, I do, uh, uh, as a side note, I do want you to read all of it in context because um, but right before this section of scripture it are, is the wardrobe that he, have, he has asked us to go ahead and um, take off. And we're not going to donate it to the goodwill because we really don't want those pieces to be worn by anyone else. It's the old self. Um, it's a pretty ragged set of clothes that we want to go ahead and just take to the trash dump or the burn pile. But for this week, when, for this um, podcast, we are going to focus on the... Um, the new wardrobe that we're getting, and but this week I want you to look at the old wardrobe in, just in case you have a few of those pieces lying around in your life that you need to go ahead and throw away. Because the new wardrobe includes things like compassion and kindness and humility. I love this idea of uh, quiet strength and discipline. It's just you know, it's just the kind of wardrobe that Jesus wore while he was here on earth. And so we're supposed to be just like him. And so when we pick out our clothes that we're going to wear um, as a believer in Christ, these are the kinds of clothes. Be even tempered. Oh, I think that one is kind of in the back of my closet. I'm not sure I'm very even tempered. 
content with second place. Totally something we're trying to teach our kids because they're real successful kids and they get first place a lot. And so it's exciting to be very successful, but to be content with second place is uh, pretty important. Quick to forgive an offense and forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. Now that is a real hard one. I remember the first time that I learned this verse, I think I've mentioned in previous podcasts that I had the honor of studying scripture pretty in depth, actually memorizing whole books of the Bible for um, for quiz purposes. I was in Bible quiz and I remember one time that I was in an argument with a friend of mine on Bible quiz. We were on the same team. He was the captain of the team and it's just a three person team and our Bible quiz um, manager was like, okay, let's look at the verses that you're getting to quiz, getting ready to quiz on. And let's pull out that one about forgiving quickly and as completely as the master. And we were like, okay, fine, we forgive. But I just remember thinking it was just so we had memorized it. We had hit it in our heart and we needed to pull that, that jacket out and put it on. And, um, I do just love the way that uh, the message words uh, the idea of wearing love as our basic all-purpose garment and that we should never be without it. And so I just think, again, you can spend time and maybe pick apart and, and determine whether or not these pieces of clothing are in the front of your closet as a believer or if you've left some of those nasty old clothes in your closet that you put on every day even though you're a believer you're that that person is gone that garment that wardrobe has been taken off and this is the new one that we wear so that's like a shopping spree happy dance kind of wardrobe to me but anyway Something very special happened last Sunday that has made this portion of the song more poignant than before. It's interesting that Mercy Me says, no matter when it happened, at 7 or 95, because my daughter Meredith just turned 7 on April 29th, and she was baptized on May 4th. And I tell you what, brand new looked good on her. She was beaming from every pore, and it was a very special day for us. Now, she gave her heart to Christ a long time ago, and um, we've been talking about it ever since. And we know that baptism is is a matter of obedience, that the Bible asks us, Jesus asked us to be baptized. But uh, we just wanted to make sure that she was old enough to remember and really understand what was going on. And so we, we didn't let her get baptized the last time our church had a baptism service, and boy, was she mad. And so this time, I sat down with her, and I just said, well, we want to make sure you really fully understand what baptism is. And then she then proceeded to share with us the entire gospel and exactly what baptism meant. And so we pretty much knew that she was ready for baptism. Now, in our church, we um, are a fairly, we're a charismatic with the seatbelt on is what our pastor calls it. And so we can get pretty excited and be pretty joyful about things, but especially about baptism and I so love this about our church and so um, baptism is a very uh, special Sunday we try to do it several times a year and we do one big Sunday and uh, we play fun exuberant joyful music and um, the people line up and can get baptized and one of the things that we do every time someone comes out of that water is is the pastor has asked that the crowd just cheer and be super excited because it is a representation of newness of life that you have died to yourself and that you've raised to new life in Christ and it's so amazing and so when Meredith went down and she came back out and the crowd cheered and I was a hot mess just crying on the stage trying to sing can't sing because I was um, crying so hard but it I saw her after service and she came running up to me and she was beaming from every pore and I just thought to myself how appropriate that this week we're doing this song because brand new sure looked 
good on her. And so um, I just hope that you can use this song as an opportunity to celebrate what God has done for you, that you'll use this song as an opportunity to to, uh, look at Colossians in a deeper way and just really see and ponder and think about this new wardrobe that we should be wearing because brand new looks good on you, but only if you're putting it on. Now, in closing, I'm not sure. I, I want to take a, just a minute before I completely close to talk about a couple of things. And I'm not sure if you're a new listener to the podcast. Maybe you've listened to every episode or maybe you're somewhere in between. But I want you to know what my intentions are and what my hopes are for you. Um, I do have the opportunity to teach some new believers in my church and in my community. And One of the things that I realized is that new believers, one of the very first things that they change in their lifestyle uh, is their listening habits. And oftentimes they begin to listen to Christian music. They do find joy and encouragement in the lyrics, which I'm sure you do too if you listen to Christian music. However, as a new follower of Christ, the Bible just sometimes seems to be a really big, confusing book And they don't know where to start, and so they tend to leave it on the shelf or just look at those verses that maybe Pastor is talking about on Sunday. But even as a lifelong Christian, I have those seasons. I have those seasons where I know I should be reading my Bible, but I'm not really sure where to start, and then so I don't. And so back to my intentions. My intentions are not to make a name for myself, but to inspire you to discover and meditate on God's Word. And my hope is that something in today's podcast will motivate you to pick up your Bible later today or this week or every day this week and see for yourself what it says. I want you to read it slow enough and often enough that you actually ponder it, that you meditate on it, and that you let it soak in until the Holy Spirit can then draw it back out and apply it to your life and your circumstances, and then ultimately so that you can then share it with others and build up build up God's kingdom and ultimately commit your life to following Christ and lead others to do the same. So it's kind of a big goal, and I, I understand that, but what can I say? I mean, we serve a really big God. I'm pretty sure he's the originator of go big or go home. And so I, I know that it's a big goal. Now, I used to be a contract trainer of new associates. I taught at an international insurance company every other month for five years. I was the lead trainer for three days for 25 to 50 folks from around the nation. New people each time would come through this training. And on the final day of each training, we would like have a business building session. And I remember talking about the fact that this was not the most glamorous part of what we were talking about that week, but that it could possibly be the most important. It included goal setting. It included budgeting and business plans and marketing plans and those kinds of things. And I would always end that session with this story and the subsequent challenge. And I want to do the same with you today. So here it is. Three frogs were sitting on a log. One decided to jump off. How many frogs are now on the log? Go ahead. You can answer. Well, the answer is not two. The answer is actually three. Because only one decided to jump off. He didn't actually jump. And my challenge is that education without action is entertainment. Let me say that again. Education without action is is entertainment. So let's go back to my intentions and my hopes. It's not my intention to be weekly entertainment for you on this podcast. I don't want to be another devotion for you. I don't want to be another sermon. And I never want to be a replacement for you attending a corporate worship setting on the weekend, submitting to the authority of a pastor and the accountability and support of a spiritual family. My intention is to inspire you to discover and meditate on God's word. And my hope is that my podcast gives you the tools and enough knowledge and motivation for you to jump into God's word and see what it says for yourself. But you can't just decide to jump in. You actually have to jump.
So jump off that log this week. Jump straight into Colossians. Start at chapter 1. There's only four chapters in Colossians. There's so much good stuff in there. You won't be disappointed. So that's my challenge to you this week. Jump in. Read Colossians all the way through. But we can spend a little extra time meditating and focusing on chapter 3. And every time you hear this song, Shake, You'll be thinking, brand new shirt looks good on me, and I know what the, what's in that wardrobe. And it includes things like compassion and humility and even temper and things like that. So that's my challenge. Colossians, read Colossians this week, especially Colossians chapter 3. So just a few quick announcements before we close. Did you know that I create weekly memory verse resources? Well, I do. I create them exclusively, however, for my mailing list. And if you give me your name and email address, I promise that I won't share it with anybody else. And I promise that I won't bombard your inbox. Really, I just email you once a week on Monday just to remind you that a new episode is posted. And in that email, I will include a link to the free memory verse wallpapers and printables that I use to remind myself of the memory verse for the week. And this week, of course, is Colossians 3, 9, and 10. And so you, the sign-up box for that is on my homepage, michellekneezat.com. And then can I ask a favor? Can I ask if this week if you would please share this podcast? There are quick links at the top of each episode on my homepage. It makes it real easy to share, real one-click to Facebook and to Twitter or even to email. And if each of you listening just shares it with one new friend this week, that could make a huge difference each week in the number of folks downloading my podcast. And I, again, I don't want to make a name for myself, but I do want to increase the chances that more folks might actually read their Bible this week. So if you could share, I would really appreciate it. Finally, if each time someone takes time to review my podcast on iTunes, it increases the chances that new folks will find me and that when they do, I have some credibility. Plus, it just flat out encourages me. So if you take the time to review my podcast on iTunes, I will take the time to personally thank you. So this week, thanks to Hoofer70570 for reviewing the podcast. I really appreciate it. Well, that's it for this episode of More Than a Song. My next podcast will be on Hello, My Name Is by Matthew West. If you have a question or comment on this song, please leave me a voicemail message at michellekneezat.com forward slash podcast question. If you would like to comment on this episode, please go to michellekneezat.com forward slash 12, where you'll find the show notes for this episode. Scroll down to the comments section. I would love to hear from you. Comment, question, or whatever. Until next time, take time to meditate on God's word and consider his ways.